some work, and let's go over that first. So for this, yeah. you, don't, you never make it. Correct. Correct. Yeah, so it's not like a natural log where you can drop an exponent out front. Yeah. I think that's what you're doing. So it's not subtracting, it's multiplying. Uh, if you wanted to deal with the negative and get rid of the negative, you would turn this into division. E to the R divided by E to the 2S. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, what do we want to look at from the homework? Five and fifteen. All right, actually, you know what? For five, it might be easier just to show what's on the board, uh, on the textbook. Um, Listen, I didn't understand what the key was trying to do. I thought the key was actually For 15, I was just wondering if, like, it says just look at the graph, right? So can you do, like, yeah. blocks to figure that, that out the area? You would need to make a graph to figure out that area. Um, and just do the box thing exactly. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, I'll just make it short. Then I guess you don't have to do it then. Okay. Um, I thought I was going to get the textbook up, but it's hiding. All right, forget the textbook. I'll do this without. Can we do a look? Yeah. All right. So, five. They gave us this graph for five. So, they gave us an x intercept of negative one and at zero, and at positive one, and then the curve does one of these things, and we want to find this area that I'm shading in, and the curve is y1 equals 3 quantity x cubed minus x, and the other curve, y2, is just the x-axis y equals zero. So if we were to you have a success back there? This one this one's rough. Yeah, it's like I mean it's it's, it's like that because it was broken in the first place. I'd rather not break the windows. So if it's a choice between Is that why your room's only so hard? Yes. I've got that window open today at least. Yeah, but it's been closed for a while because it's rain. I don't want to go. Yeah, actually. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot we put that the yeah. soda out there. Whatever it is. It was so good. All right. Yo, what if we all So we don't we don't need three people working on it. So one of you do it. The other guys just sit down and pay attention. All right. So if we want to set up the integral here, there's a couple ways you could do this. First of all, what do you notice about these two regions? They're the same. I mean, they're not like the same, but they're congruent, right? They're the same area. Uh, and so we don't need to set up both integrals. We can get away with just setting up one of the integrals and then doubling it to capture the area of the other region. Um, so which area do you want to do? The left on the top or the right on the bottom? Left on the top. OK, makes sense. That's on top. Makes it easier. So if you say area equals the integral, if we're doing the left, we're going just from negative 1 to 0. And then who's on top? Which curve is on top? Yeah, y1. So y2 is the x-axis. y1 is the curve. So y1 is on top for that region. So we would put that on top, 3 quantity x cubed minus x. And then we subtract the bottom curve, which in this case is subtracting 0, so you don't really need to write that. And then that's the area of this section. If you don't want to have to write a whole second integral, you can just say, well, just take that and double it. And that way we get both areas, because these are clearly the same area. And so that's how we would end up with 6 integral from negative 1 to 0 of x cubed minus x dx. And so that is a way that you could write the integral. 
Now, maybe you did the bottom right interval instead, in which case your bounds are from 0 to 1, and this is a negative x cubed and a positive x. So that would also be acceptable. Or maybe you did make two different integrals, one for each region, and then you would have this integral right here without the two in front of it, plus the integral from one, 0 to 1 with a positive x and a negative x cubed. Um, so there's like three different ways you could express this answer for five in terms of integral. Um, but this is, I think, the easiest way to do it. Did we have to get the area or just set it up? This, okay, so then this would be fine. And you might have had something different on your paper. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just depends on which section you chose to zoom in on and double or if you chose to do both of them together. Sam? So is it not possible to write the integral from if you try to do all the way from negative 1 to 1, I don't think that's possible to do as a single integral, because I think then these two areas will cancel out and give you an area of 0. So if you... Yeah. Yeah. So if you try to do it from negative 1 to 1 as one integral, but going all the way through, uh, then it would cancel out because the integral, this is positive and this is negative. But we don't want the integral, we want the area. So the area, you have to make this part positive in some way, um, either by taking this thing and doubling it, or by doing zero minus the curve and getting a positive x and a negative x cubed. So you wouldn't want to do this as an integral from negative 1 to 1. You'd have to do two separate integrals, one from negative 1 to 0, and the other one from 0 to 1, where you kind of have y1 being the bottom curve, 0 minus that. Or you'd have to just do one of these sections only and double it, because they're the same area. You could have that absolute valuing amounts of the same thing, so that would, that would be fine. But absolute value is more difficult to like than actually do. It's a lot easier to do it this way or even break it up into two integrals. Because if you do absolute value, in order to then evaluate, you yeah. still have to break it up into two integrals. Anything else with five? We had a question about 15, but then somebody said, no, never mind, not 15. Um, there's somebody else asked for seven or nine. Uh, I think she asked that out loud and I responded to her, so I think she's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, do you mean these right here, Diane? Yeah, that's what I was saying, because for my work, I put, um, let me see what I put. I, put the, I added up the integrals from negative 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. Yeah, that would also work. And yeah. then the one from zero to one, the curve is on the bottom, and y equals zero is on top. So top minus bottom is zero minus this thing, and that would give you a positive x and a negative x cubed for that interval from zero to one. Um, so you'd end up with like opposite insides of the integral, but then you could add those up as well. So this would be another way to write the integral. So there's, there's several right answers in terms of how you express the integral. If you wanted to keep the insides the same, then you could subtract this thing and this thing would give you a negative value. And then you'd say, but I need to make this positive so it does to subtract the negative. And that would also work. Thanks, Michaela. That up, that's the same thing. Yeah. Yep. So if you like, it's it was like this, and then you pull the negative three out, and so you have a minus three times this integral. Yeah, that would also work. So that's what's annoying about this sort of thing is I can put one thing on the key, but I probably can't think of every different possible way you might think to express it. 
and express it correctly. So lots of ways to skin a cat, as they say down in physics land, right? What? Nine. All right. So moving on to nine. In number nine, they did not give us a oh, go to there. All right. So nine, they give you the integral. So this is from zero to six. Uh, um, no. Aren't you left handed? Right handed. That's why this is such a problem for me. I agree. You're left handed. It's that middle one. Yeah, you don't, so I'm not angry that you do this. All right, nine. They give us this integral and they say, sketch the graph and shade the uh, region. So we're not evaluating this, we're trying to just come up with what would this look like. Um, so here we have top, and that's bottom. And we're going from zero to six, right? So for x equals zero, let's do the bottom equation first. It's going to be easier, I think. So the bottom equation starts at zero. And then by the time you get all the way out to x equals six, you're up to a height of one. Because six over six is one. So this is just a line. With a slope of one six, one, two, three, four, five, and then count it. Six. Uh, and it won't be negative, because this remember we do top minus bottom. So the bottom is x minus six, and we're subtracting over here. Now the top is a little more complicated, but they're giving us this nice bound, so we're gonna to start at zero. If you plug in zero, what's two to the zero? One is four times one is Four. So we start there, at zero comma four. Then you plug in one, and now we're doing four. You can think of this as four over two to the x over three, right? Same thing. So let's go out to x equals three, because that'll be easier. What's two to the three thirds? Two, right? So then that's four divided by two is two. And if you go out to six, four isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So when x is three, then you have two to the first. Four divided by two. That's fine. And then when you get out to six, six over three is two. Two squared is four. Four divided by four is one. So, probably just something like that. Javier? I got a smart basketball. I got a quick one. Okay. Do you think Will Chamberlain is better than Joel? Yes. Alright, Armand. <laughs> oh, oh, I mean, not true. now. Will's dead. He can't really play. <laughs> wow. Well, you need to have the beginning and the end. And then I was just picking three because it would give you a But probably you're right. Probably because you do the beginning and the end and get the picture. Um, and then we would say, okay, we're starting here at zero because that's the lower bound. We're ending here at six. And we want the area between these two curves. So that's this area here, like that. But kind of that thought process identify your top curve, identify the bottom curve. Um, and then graph each of them on the same graph and kind of see what's in between them. Uh, did that answer what you were asking for, Diane? Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right. Is the goat? Yeah, I was just confused with the um, top and bottom part. But you explained it. Sorry, that we were having an important question about Will Chamberlain. Uh, what did you say, Diana? No. Guys, I, I was just saying that I was confused with the top and bottom thing, okay. but you explained that. All right. 
Anything else from the homework that we want to look at? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. So another way you could do this, if good luck, you just wanted to graph this whole thing as a single function. That more power to you. But if you could, maybe not with this particular example, you could just graph that whole thing and then shade the area underneath the curve and above the x-axis, and that's the same thing. Now, for this, I have no clue what that would look like because I'm taking this curve and subtracting a line. No, thank you. I think it's much easier to identify top, identify bottom, and graph separate curves. But if you can kind of combine them into one curve, then you can go ahead and do that and just shade under the curve and above the x-axis. Um, any other comments or questions on the homework? All right. <laughs> All right, give me a yes or no for the homework, please. Yes. Yes. Actually, just anybody, should I should I put no for anybody? All right. Um, and then, let's see, Armand, you were not here, but you said you did it. And then Stanley is not here, so he gets an absence. And Zane's not here. And Charles isn't here. Arif is right there. I hope I didn't like out him for anything bad, did I? And my here is not here. Not. Miss Cat was just here, makes me think AP money. That's due by March 8th. Please, we don't wait till March 8th. You don't know if maybe suddenly you like die on March 7th and you're not able to like hand in the money on March 8th. So please hand in the money before then. If I die, you also won't need the money at that point either, so you may as well give it to school. So, so please submit your AP money if you haven't yet. You got to be all paid up by March 8th. Drop off the payment in the purple box. If you already made your deposit, did everybody already do their initial $15 deposit? Yeah? So don't overpay. So if you already paid your $15, don't then pay the whole amount. Take the entire amount minus the 15 or whatever that you already paid and only pay the remaining balance that you owe. Because they don't want to have to deal with figuring out, oh, okay, this idiot overpaid. What do we need to owe him back? And that's a pain. So make it easier on everybody. Pay the correct amount the first time, please. All right. Um, moving along. You guys can ignore that. I'll just leave it up there for my block three class so I don't have to rewrite it. And we're going to look at example three. Also, somebody said my name? Yes. Do I have a rubber band? Uh, no. Sorry. 
Say again? No. Um, I, I don't promise that I don't care. Jim three. Someone bring some over. Mahir's here. Sorry, Mahir. I don't know why I said you weren't here. All right. So just make sure all you online people, Mahir, Diane, Diana, Brianna, Kirsten, submit your Chapter 7.1a homework for me, please. I do Flight Pro 6. So, yeah. I don't feel like writing <laughs> All right, so we're just going to do more practice today. For example three, we're just looking at the sine and cosine curves. So Starting with a graph. Let's graph sine. What's sine of zero? Nope. Zero. And then what does sine do from there? Up. Up goes up to the right. And then what does it do? Down. It comes back down. When it comes back down and hits the x-axis again, where is it? Down. It's at zero. What's the x value? High. Very good. High. We'll just pretend you were going to stop right there and say just pi. All right. Uh, if you continue off to the left, where do you go with sine? Down. Down and then back up at? Negative. Negative pi. Now, let's talk about cosine. What's the cosine graph start at? One. One. Cosine of zero is? One. That sucks. Go away. I'm two. I thought I was going to guess. All right. One, because I'm not little chamberlain. All right. So cosine of zero is one. Two, one, two, two. Okay. And then cosine hits the x axis at pi over two. And we have an intersection point right here, so there's no point in continuing on to the right. Yes, cosine goes down, bottoms out at pi, negative one, and then goes back up. Now, if you go to the left, what does cosine do? Down. It goes down. And then it bottoms out at negative pi, comma, negative 1. And we have another intersection point right there. Now, what we need to do is find out what's the area between these two curves. And in order to find out what that area is in just one of these shaded regions. So, we could continue on, and we know that sine is going to continue to wiggle, waggle back and forth, and up and down, and up and down, and so is cosine, and they'll, they'll intersect a lot. And so there will be lots of bounded regions that look like this. Uh, we want to find the area of one of those regions. So we found one of those regions by just sketching each parent function forwards and backwards from zero, and we say, oh, we got an intersection point, intersection point, let's go with that. So now we've got to figure out, okay, well, what is this point? And what is that point? How do we do that? 
Cosine minus sine equals. Oh, I think I took it all. What? What if you took pi? Oh, sine x equals down. How about sine x equals cosine x? So we want to know when are these the same? When you want to know when are two functions equal to each other, when do they intersect, you set them equal. And how are you going to solve that thing? Pi over 4. Pi over 4? I don't know. Pi over 2. So, yeah. yeah. So you could divide both sides by cosine. And that way we have, what's sine divided by cosine? Tangent. And what's this over here? 1. Because we're dividing. Um, and that way you have a single trig function instead of two trig functions. It's really hard to solve a trig equation that's involving two of the different trig functions. So if you can come up with a way to get only one trig function in your equation, it's going to be much easier to solve. So now you would say, well, what angle makes tangent be 1? Pi over 4. Pi over 4. And where else is tangent going to equal 1? No Third quadrant. Third quadrant. Five, five. five pi over four. But if you look over here, we went backwards. So what's the negative version of five pi over four? Yeah, just subtract two pi. So if you're like five pi over four, wait a minute, this is a negative angle. Just subtract two pi, and it's the same thing. So then you remember the co-terminal angle thing. So we got x equals pi over 4 and x equals negative 3 pi over 4. Those will be your bounds of integration. So now I can say, all right, let's set up an integral. Area equal integral. Lower bound is negative 3 pi over 4 because a comes first. Upper bound is positive pi over 4. It seems to the right. And then we got to see who's on top. So I forget, who is red and who is purple? Uh, sign is purple. So sign is purple. Right. <laughs> So, cosine was red, and sine is purple. So who's on top? Cosine. Cosine's on top. So we're going to have cosine x on top, minus sine x on the bottom, top minus bottom. And now you can integrate. Um, so when you go to integrate this, what is the integral of cosine? Sine. What's the integral of sine? Cosine. Negative cosine. So this will become plus cosine. And we're going this from negative 3 pi over 4 up to pi over 4. Any questions with coming up with the intersection points or intersection x values for the integral or anything so far? Sam? So why do we have to pi over 4 and not? Yeah, we could have kept going to 5 pi over 4. You're right. So we could just extend. Well, we got 5 pi over 4. Let's just keep going. So this is going oh, down. Go this is coming out. back up. And then we would do this region instead. And then sine would be on top. So you're right. You could do 5 pi over 4. Then we would be doing this region. And we would just extend the graphs a little bit. So you can do 5 pi over 4 on the bottom. And that would be 5 pi over 4 down there. And it would be pi over 4 to 5 pi over 4. And it would be sine minus cosine. So we want the area of one of these regions. There's a lot of these regions. As we said, these curves intersect a lot. So um, you could do this region. You could do this region over here to the right. Um, and which region you choose is then going to determine what are your bounds of integration and also who's on top. Because these curves keep switching who gets to be on top. Um, so now that you've got that, I decided to do the one over on the left, but you could very well do the one that Sam suggested. And then you go ahead and plug stuff in. What's sine of pi over 4? What's cosine of pi over 4? All right, minus what's sine of negative 3 pi over 4 or sine of 5 pi over 4, same thing. And what quadrant is that in? 3. And so sine is negative, and cosine is same thing, because in quadrant 1 and 3, sine and cosine are the same. So in quadrant 1, with pi over 4, they're both positive. For a quadrant 3 angle, like 5 pi over 4 or negative 3 pi over 4, they're both negative, because tangent is positive in quadrant 3. So you can think of it, that's a quadrant 1 angle, that's a quadrant 3 angle, and so... Both sine and cosine give you negative values. 
So when we go to do this, what's root 2 over 2 plus another root 2 over 2? So what's 2 over 2 over 2? Root 2. Minus what's negative root 2 over 2 plus another negative root 2 over 2? Negative root 2, because they're both negative, so they get more negative. And then what's 2 minus negative root 2? 2 over 2. So lots of 2s. We should have done this yesterday. Um, so that's your area. All right, so, <laughs> so there's your, thanks for laughing. Uh, so that's your area, Ta -da. and that's going to be the area for any one of these regions. So if you go to any section of the graph that's in between those two curves, that's going to be the area. Comments, follow up on example three. So what makes this one harder is all this stuff where we got to figure out, okay, what are the bounds of integration going to be? Because that's the deal with the trick function. It's annoying. No. Uh, go ask my brother. Um, if you want to uh, do like pad drawings or stuff like with that, and you're going to build stuff, but you're not going to like build it yourself. You're going to like computer program it. Um, this might be helpful for that, or at least knowing the math behind it is going to be necessary for you to be able to read and know what's going on as you like input something into like a computer design program. Uh, now I have never done any of that because I'm just strict math. I don't do the applications. I don't I don't adulterate with my math with use of this. So why not? Uh, <laughs> uh, but there are I think lots of uses for this. Go ask the physics teachers or, or engineer or something. Mr. You guys know uh, Mr. Chong? Like, so. Chong Chong. He's yeah, the yeah, technology teacher. Yeah, the technology yeah. teacher. That guy, he knows math really well, so you could ask him as well. Because he, he knows like the hands-on stuff, um, the building stuff from being in the tech end department. But his math skills are like, yeah. are very high. Yeah, I was in your IT for this work in um, class one time, because I had a virtual period last semester, and he was like, oh! Interval, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I have no idea what you're saying, dude. Yeah, he, he's, he's very good with his math. So he probably knows a lot that I don't know in terms of like how that connects, how this stuff connects to what he does. Um, or you can take what he does and go really far into it, how it could connect and become useful. I gotta look into this more. This is only my second year teaching this topic. We're way into the course, so. This stuff, this is only my second time through. I haven't really gone in depth to say, hey, what is this tool? Uh, but that would be good too. Um, all right, number this one, example four. We'll do this, and then we'll look at how do we use the calculator to help us out. Because the calculator is going to become a really powerful tool for us to evaluate and find these areas. Uh, and you will have a calculator on the test because. Half of the AP exam is calculator, so we got to know our way around not using the calculator, like here. And we got to be able to also, okay, how do we do this with a calculator in the event that we're allowed to use it um, to speed things along? Because sometimes on the non calculator part, they'll write the problem so that you have to use a calculator, they'll give you something that cannot be integrated by hand, and you have to use a calculator to do it for you. Uh, we've seen a couple of those problems a while back when we were doing like AP choice questions uh, back in like December uh, and we'll, we'll see them again as we get closer to the test. But before that let's do one more by hand. Uh, find the area of this region between these things. So first of all what do you notice we don't have? We don't have bounds. How are we going to get them? Set them equal. So it's kind of like finding the zeros except in the zeros you set the things with a zero which is what you would get if you take these things and subtract them all on one side, which is what we're going to do. So we have 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x equals negative x squared plus 2x. So yeah, once you have this equation now written down, you're right, you are finding the zeros for that equation. Because in order to solve this, we've got to get everybody on the same side. So we have bring over the x squared. Oh, they cancel. Hooray. And bring over the 2x. What is that? 12x? Oh, wait, 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 wait
So then when you factor this, what do we have? And so what are our solutions for x? Zero and plus or minus two. So we have three intersection points. That's unfortunate. Um, that indicates we're probably going to have these things switch who's on top and who's on the bottom. So if we draw this, let's start with f. If we plug in negative 2, What's your method again? I don't remember. So explain. I don't know. What's it called? Like you like Oh, like pick a point. So like pick a point in between here and see who's on top. And then over here, we switch at zero. And that way we don't have to actually draw the graph and see it for ourselves. Yeah, I think now I understand what you're saying. I think we can do that. No graph. So we could avoid a graph and just pick a point in this region. So we know we intersect at negative 2. We know we intersect at 0. And we know we intersect at 2. So let's plug in negative 1. It's kind of, yeah, it's like doing the first derivative test. So check negative 1 and see who's on top over here. All right. So plug negative 1 into both of these, and who's higher? Negative 3, negative three plus 10, three. wouldn't this be minus 1? Yeah. And plus 10. So what's negative 3 minus 1? Negative 4 plus 10 is 6. So f equals 6, and then g is negative 3. All right, so f is on top for this section over here on the left. And then on the right, between 0 and 2, we do the same thing with positive 1. f equals, well, we can't just assume they switch. They might intersect and then, like, bounce off each other. Oh, like, if g is underneath, it might come up here and then keep going back down. And f might bounce off g and keep going back down. Yeah, so maybe it does bounces and then comes up. I don't know. Let's check just to be safe. Um, so f, we have 3 minus 1 minus 10. That's what? Negative 8? And for g, we would have negative 1 plus 2. The 1, so now g is on top. All right, so you were right. So, yeah, that way you don't have to draw the actual curve. You can just say, figure out who's on top and who's on the bottom. If you like the picture, I happen to like the picture. I want to see the graph, but you come up with a way that avoids the graph. You'll want, you'll need like the graphing calculator. So the ones that I have are not going to be good enough for what we're doing here. Yeah. Do those things do a table? I don't know. I'm okay. But then for evaluating an integral, those things can't do that. So the graphing calculator is really what you need to get like the ability to evaluate the integral. Yeah. Well, what's the difference? Uh, we didn't use negative two and two. We used negative one and positive one. Oh, because that, those are where they intersect. So at negative two and two and at zero. Functions will equal each other. So then we won't know who's up on top and who's on the bottom. So we got to go in between to see, okay, in between, one of these is on top and at the bottom, and vice versa. Uh, but at these points, these are intersection points, so they will be like this. So now you can set up integrals, and here, how many integrals will we need? Two. All right, so you need two integrals. So first integral goes from who to where. Negative 3 to 0, and then who's going first? F. F, so top minus bottom. So F is going first, 
So we would have 3x cubed minus x squared minus 10x minus negative x squared plus 2x. Um, we kind of did. Um, and that becomes 3x cubed minus 12x. So 3x cubed minus 12x. Yeah, probably. Or at least write f of x minus g of x. So if you don't want to write all this out, just write f of x minus g of x inside there. And then you're going to add to that your second integral. That's going to go from who to where? Zero to two. And now who's going first? G of x. Because on the second section, g is on top. So we'll say g of x minus f of x. And when we do that, like in there, what is g of x minus f of x going to be? Not exactly the same thing. Just exactly the opposite. So whatever f minus g is, once you have that, and you want to do g minus f, just reverse the order, uh, or reverse the sign, so this would be negative 3x cubed and positive 12x. Yes, I can. So that's a good reason. But not, now, in this not case, not. you look at the picture and you're not going to be the same. Yeah. Not necessarily. Um, well, let's just look at those. Um, so, in this case, we get away with not doing that because the two reasons are not obviously identical. Now, it turns out that they are, but you wouldn't be able to tell that from the graph. Like, looking at the graph, it wouldn't be like, oh, these are clearly the same side region. Um, it happens that they are, but you can't tell. There are going to be times where they are the same size region, and it's obvious from the graph, but you only know that if you look at the graph. You can only look at it if you look at the table, right? Uh, but here you get away with not doing that, and because it's not going to matter to you. So when you go and integrate, 3x to the third becomes... Minus 6x squared, and we'll do that from negative 3 to 0. And then over here, same thing but opposite, negative 3 fourths x to the fourth plus 6x squared. And that's going from 0 to 2. Now, here, when you plug in 0 for x, what do we get? 0. When you plug in negative 2 for x, it's negative 2 to the fourth. 16 divided by 4 is, 4 times 3 is 12. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 6 is negative 24. So we have 0 minus 12 minus 24. What would that? Plus, so keep the track of negatives and everything. Now here we're plugging in 2 first. We plug in 2, 2 to the 4th is 16 divided by 4 is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Uh, maybe. And then plug in 2 and you get 24. And then you subtract, you plug in 0 and you get back 0. Yeah, you're right. So 12 minus 24. That'll become a positive 24, right? So, you're right, 12. So, 12 minus 24 is negative 12, but it becomes positive. And then over here, also 12, so we get an area of 24. So, it's another situation like example 3 where the hard work is at the beginning. Well, I mean, this is also hard work, but it's mostly tedious. But making sure you find out where these curves intersect and then you use those intersection points to kind of like our bounds of integration and then we can do the Bethlehem method instead of making a full graph go inside each interval and say hey how about this x value in between those intersection points who's on top 
and then another x value inside the next two intersection points, who's on top, and then that lets you know who's on top and who's on bottom to make it up to there. Now, it would be nice if we could do this stuff in the calculator, so that's going to be what we look at next. And unmute. And this thing. And I'll give you guys a printout of like a handout of notes tomorrow on how to use your graphing calculator. Sam, would you please kill the backlight? Thanks. And if you have your own graphing calculator, get it out. And if you don't have your own graphing calculator, you really ought to get one. All right. All right. So, ah, uh, it's annoying. Are you in a creative writing class? Yeah. If you ever take one in college or have a creative writing assignment, I think you've got the. Uh, an outline of a good story there. Just please change names. Uh, okay, yeah, just just throw him under the box. Like make him the cannibal. You were the cannibal. That's true. I wasn't the cannibal. I'm the one forcing others to be cannibals. I don't know which is worse. All right. So. Oh, they were already cannibals. I was just doing experiments on the cannibals. Yeah. Oh, well, they deserve it then. And, and finding, like, random two-year-olds and feeding them to these people. Okay, that's also not great. And, yes, I think that also happened. That was, that was going to be dessert. <laughs> All right, so say you've got these two curves. We'll say one of them is y equals negative 2x squared plus 2, and the other one is, is y equals x squared. So how do we find the area between these two curves? Uh, and I'm not going to give us the bounds of integration. I'm not saying, hey, do this from like x equals 0 to x equals 5 or anything. It's just, here, you got these two graphs. How do we come up with where, like, what that area is between them? So first thing I would probably do is type them in. And we don't know who's on top yet, so then we graph it, and we, and maybe you want to zoom in a little bit, so we have a better view of things. So I'll zoom in, and if once you hit the zoom button and set, select zoom in, option two, you move the blinky dot to where you want to like center your zooming in on. So I'll move the blinky dot up in between the two curves, so it's like right smack in the middle of them, and then that's going to be where I zoom in. And now I have a a clearer picture so that we can see it more easily. Uh, hit zoom. Select option two, zoom in. And then move the blinky dot where it is you want to zoom in. Uh, so now, who's on top? The negative one. The negative guy. The upside down guy is up top, right? The upside down curve is on the top. That's the blue curve. So. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find this area between the blue curve and the red curve. Blue is on top. We now need to find out where these curves intersect. Do you guys know how to do this on your calculator? Second calculate. Second calculate. Second trace. And then we want to intersect. So option five. You move your blinky dot over here to close to where the two curves intersect. You can see there's two intersection points. Hit enter twice, three times. And it tells you the intersection point. So you move the blinky dot close to the point where the curves intersect, and then you hit enter three times. And we just care about the x coordinate. And that looks like negative 0.816. So I'm going to write that down and say, all right, this is x equals negative 0.816. Probably the other one is the same thing, but positive. But if you want to be absolutely certain, second trace intersect. And then move the blinky dot all the way over to the other intersection point and just hit enter three times. So once it's over there, hit enter, 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 enter. And you got positive 0.816. Why did I say it with me? I don't know. All right, 
that's uh, point eight six. So that's going to be our bounds of integration. Now, here's what you do. I don't know of a way to get your calculator to do the area just between these two curves. So we go back into here, and we say, okay, this guy was top, right? The negative 2x squared plus 2 was top. So we'll just leave him here and subtract the bottom curve. So minus x squared. Nope. x squared. Nope. Stupid technology. There. All right. And then we've now taken this x squared curve, the bottom curve. We've moved it up there and subtracted it from the top curve. And now I'll just delete this guy. And now you can go back to the graph. It's going to look different. And then you do second trace integral. That's option seven. And you do in the integral. And those are your bounds. So you type in negative 0.816, enter. That gives you the lower limit. Upper limit, you say positive 0.816, enter. Ta-da! That's still wrong, but OK. And that's the area. So then your area right here is this interval value. That area equals 2.177. Extended. How do you um, zoom in? So, like, because I press zoom in, and then it doesn't zoom in to, like, where the line comes. So, you zoom in. Hit the zoom in. You have a blinky dot now, right? Move the blinky dot to where you want to zoom in. And then hit enter. So, uh, tomorrow I'll have, like, a printout of the notes on using the calculator for this that I can give you. And we'll probably have a little more practice with this tomorrow. Uh, let me see that the homework is and see if this is something that we do tomorrow or not. So tonight we got 12 to 14. I think that's good. 19, 21. Yeah, let's do them. 23, 24, 26, 27. That seems like a lot. I'm going to go into the homework and take this a couple things off, okay. but I want you to do the assignment tonight and do tomorrow. Okay. But I'll just take a couple of things off the assignment. You guys end up. Okay. I could email the guy in charge of like maintenance in this building. He's really excellent. And I could just say, look, could we please have, uh, yeah, have a good long weekend? Um, He's in physics the next two days, so I won't see him. Uh, you guys can go to your block three. Um, I can I can email him and say, hey, can we get the window actually fixed so that it's like openable, and not screwed shut? Well, no, Mr. Olson is really excellent at his job. All right, guys, you can go to your block three. Uh, class, I think, is over.